Hello, today we're going to look at a Scala pattern that you can apply to your code whenever you have a list fold left or some sort of other sequence uh, being folded and hopefully this should make it easier for you to refactor your code to make bigger chunks of code smaller and so on and so on. Uh, so let's get to it, I'm going to tell you what it is. Um, first let's look at the example that I have here using fold left. So I have a list of numbers from 1 to 10 and I'm folding them starting with this uh, my state empty value. So my state is a class that we will uh, use to accumulate all the re results, all the numbers from this uh, this list, uh, and we will collect them like grouping them into three lists, uh, which you know, can overlap. So we'll have the even numbers, the one, the ones that are divisible by two, and we'll have the odd numbers, so everything else, and numbers that are divisible by five. Uh, so in our case, this will be five and ten. But if this was you know an input from somewhere else, this could be anything. Uh, so uh, we will fold left on this on this uh, list, starting with this in this empty state, and then uh, if the number is uh, divisible by two, we will add it to the even list. Otherwise, we'll add it to the to the odd list. And using this updated state, like this is already a my state value, we will uh, make a check for the uh, divisible by five condition, and uh, maybe add the number to the the five list or just leave the state unchanged, so whatever we had from the previous step. And here you can already see that this is uh, potentially, there, there could be a bug here, there isn't, but if I use S here, I know the types will all match, and there's no way to tell that I'm using this state or this state, and they will always be different. Like, if I'm adding a number here um, to one of these lists, and I don't do that here, I just lost an entire iteration of this of this function that we called in fold left. Uh, so we would like to avoid that. Uh, so one way to make these changes that we are making more composable and maybe safer is to extract these two changes, like adding this, uh, adding numbers to this first list and the same list, and then adding uh, the number to this third list. We can make these two steps. So let's call this step one. Uh, We'll just copy it blindly. Uh, this will be a function from, oh, sorry, this will be a def, a function from uh, like taking an int parameter and this will be a my state to my state. So this will just take the original state and return the updated one. And we'll have a very similar state for the step two, uh, except this will be this. Uh, Missing brace. Now it no longer compiles because we need to rename the, the the usage of our state here. This will be s actually. So in this case, it's obviously uh, the right thing to do to use s because that's the only state that we have. So we have these two steps. So uh, basically, functions that are of the shape my state to my state, and we can combine them here. So we'll do the step one uh, with with next. Uh, this is a function from state to state, from my state to my state. We can apply it with uh, s, and this is our like state one, one. And now we can call step two next and pass s one. And if we inline this here, uh, now we no, no longer have like multiple state values. And we can actually like this uh, is just function composition. We can just say a step one and then step two. Uh, step two next, and then apply with s, and this uh, this is just better. Uh, there's no way to accidentally use the the state from like the original state in the second step, which is good. Uh, now, if we wanted to uh, make this first step and potentially return some information from it, like uh, maybe what's the number odd, like let's say it's something like this, uh, then we would return. If it's odd, then here it will be false, and here it will be true. Now we no longer can do this because the, the types don't match up. We cannot just compose these functions together. Uh, so for this reason, uh, something like a state monad was introduced. So the state monad basically looks like this. Uh, let's say it's a case class uh, s and a, and it has a function from s to s and a. So exactly this shape, except like the S is my state and the A is Boolean in this case. 
And this is a monad because you can combine values of this using the flat map operator. Uh, you can put it in a for comprehension. You can use the right strike operator. All the things that we have for monads are there. Uh, I'm not going to dive deep into how state works and what you can do with it. Uh, there are better resources for that. I'm going to link some in the description if you're curious. Now let's just uh, continue to use it. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, so we are not using the state monad yet. Uh, let's try to do this. So we will call this v2. And also let's call these like v1 step 1 and v1 step uh, step 2. Uh, these are not good names. Please don't use these names in, uh, in your real code. Uh, let's use the same names. And yeah, so uh, be because the state monad uh, has this ability to return a value from uh, you know, so some result of a computation and pass it to the next state monad, it makes it easy to, to split large functions that you might be having in your fold left uh, into smaller ones. Like any, any, any kind of function that you have here uh, would likely be possible to, to extract into multiple state functions. Uh, so we are going to just take these ones uh, and pretend like we are using that feature like this extra information. So we are going to take these ones and uh, and uh, change them into the state monad uh, to show how that would compose. So these will be v2 and v2. Uh, let's just rename them here. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. So I'll do this incrementally, uh, change this one first. And to make this change, I just need to wrap this in state modify. Uh, that's just one of the functions in state. Uh, I'm also going to import the cat syntax, the cat's implicits, uh, because I know I will need I will need that. For now, let's ignore this uh, and let's fix the second one. This is the same change, right? I'm just changing this this type and wrapping this in state modify. And now we can try to you know, call all of that. So we'll have view two step one with next, and because this is now a monad, not just a function, we can compose them. Uh, like you know, you could I could say flat map uh, v two step one step two, and this would be something. This is like a, a state t of sorry a state of mm, okay. The, the type doesn't doesn't help really here, but uh, this is state my state and unit, just a composition of these two things. And we can uh, use this operator instead, uh, which will do the same thing. So this is a state value. To run one, we can do just run and provide the initial state. So in our case, it's s. And this will give us an eval. This is uh, something from cats that uh, basically helps get stack safety where it's not present. Uh, we can just call value. We don't care about this in this video. Uh, this gives us my state and unit. So the state type and the result of the last operation. So it was here unit and we are getting unit. If you don't want this unit, of course, you can just ignore it. Uh, but this is the same as just calling run as uh, this just returns the state uh, from this value. And we can just return that. So yeah, so this is what it looks like. Uh, we are not done. One thing we can do here is because we are still running the state after every iteration of the fold, like we are not doing this just once, we're doing this after every step of the fold. We can change this and we can use traverse instead. And now we won't have the state here, we'll just have next, which means that we cannot run this here. We can just do this. And the result of this will be a state of my state and the list of units. So a list of all the results from this for every number in the in the original list. But we don't care about these these values because they're just all unit. So I can use traverse underscore. This is not like spe special scala syntax, this is just a method name. This is like traverse, but it ignores the, uh, the values inside and just returns unit at the end. So we have a state, my state and unit, and I can run it here. Except we don't have a, the state, we need to provide the initial state, which is my state empty. And this again is a my state. So this is the result of all our work. Uh, I can unwrap this. And yeah, we're done here. Now there are other changes that I, I can make to simplify this code even further. 
or reduce the scope where the state is visible because this is usually a good practice to you know minimize the amount of places where you're in, you're uh, able to access the state so you don't accidentally use like the wrong state or use the state without knowing like uh, i know that this condition doesn't require the state it just requires the input so i don't need to have this condition inside the state monad i can actually take this uh, and unwrap the, the whole thing and wrap the you know just the changes of the state like this and this will still work so i have just two smaller uh, programs uh, two smaller state programs instead of one bigger bigger program and usually this is good you know the, the more complex your code be becomes uh, you'll notice this uh, can help uh, in, in your code base we can do the same here and finally cherry on top what do we do to not change the state we return state pure unit and this is just the identity function wrapped in state. And this comes from the definition of state uh, pure here. So this is just a function from S to S and whatever we passed in pure. So this is it. This is how we would uh, do these things. And now you'll notice that the, the function here in Traverse, it never sees the state directly. We can still access the state by, by you know, using the state monad, like state modify, state get, and so on if we say state get my state um, you know right now i'm not using this but i could maybe fluff up on it do some other stuff using the state uh, there's so much that you can do with this and uh, because it's a monad and it's not just you know a wrapper over this s to s and a function uh, you can extract smaller pieces and compose them using well-known operators like fluff map and uh, the right shark. Uh, so it's a really a nice tool to split these chunks of code and fold. Uh, that's just one of the use cases for state and I recommend that you look for others. Uh, but this is what I wanted to show here today. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.